Your brother, I'm telling you, he's, oh, he's really for real. You can make money doing this. For a while, had an office, a website, newspaper articles, even had a book written about him. So what happened? Couldn't cope. This movie is pretty much uh, two and a half hours of Clint Eastwood telling himself, there's life after death. <laughs> yeah. There's something. Else. I'll live it'll eternally. Yeah. Well, yeah. Especially after these two films that he did, you're hoping that there's something better for him after that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's an hour and 20 minute film stretched out to almost three. I don't even know if it's an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm being generous. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's, Clint, it's Clint Eastwood. I'm trying to give him that much. I mean, there's so much long periods of this film of absolutely nothing happening. And you know what? I can deal with that with films when they're like really cinematography focused like you're like wow look at these beautiful scenic vistas but it's like the insides of matt damon's apartment that we're staring (laughs) at like this is nothing that's impressive to look at it was turning like the life story of matt damon if everyone decided to stop hiring him (laughs) hoping to god he'd get a letter under the door it's like we found work for you yes that doesn't happen sitting in his kitchen at the little table eating a tv dinner you know (laughs) getting mad and throwing his dish in the sink even though i like in this film that when he's out of that apartment every chick is fucking eyeballing him like crazy like oh god i want your dick exactly. <laughs> right now i mean it, it, really I because like, i didn't see that oh, oh easily yeah i oh, mean come on yeah, i mean yeah, class, the bookstore i mean what when he when he goes to oh take, you know what you're right cooking class i mean yeah. everyone's eyeballing i mean dude, like, i want to be next to a born identity right there like like <laughs> even the chef the the guy chef the old the fat guy oh, yeah. chef who's teaching the class is like pussy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he came over and he was just like Hey, uh, you got a partner? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what, you're single? Yeah. <laughs> you doing later? You, you kind of look like a uh, porn identity. Yeah. Hey, you want to like, go, yeah. go, go bowling later? Want to yeah. get fucking ass? I mean, you want to play pool? <laughs> you use a knife just like him. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, look, I, I we're talking bad about the film, and I think that this movie is going to get a lot of criticism, but I'm looking forward to how all our responses come out, at least mm. for me, because I think I know everybody looking at each other. But, you know, this in this movie... And the reason why we're talking about death so much is because, yeah, look, uh, Clint Eastwood is what, about 150 now, something like that? No, 125. Yeah. Okay, I'm he's sorry. He's not he's as old as Yoda, Yoda yet, yet, but yeah. Yeah, but he's yeah, getting there. Yeah, yeah he's, he's getting there. He's, 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 like Yoda. he's yeah, almost yeah. a master Jedi. Yeah. So <laughs> he, I, I'm sure he is reflecting on what's going to happen up to his soul, to his well-being after he's gone. And this movie is putting us through two hours of what he's thinking about when it comes to that to that issue. Yeah, you, you you write a book about that. You, you don't make a movie about <laughs> yeah, it, all right? It's only a little bit. Like, a lot yeah. of people are going to go see this on the assumption that it's some sort of serious discussion about that. But here's the key. It isn't at all. It's not. It's no. Like it barely touches on it. Wait. There's like, like you know, you've got the characters. You've got Matt Damon, who's a guy who's a who's a psychic. So ever since he was a kid, he's been able to, I mean, not in a sixth sense, cool, creepy sort of way, but get flashes where he sees the loved dead ones of others and is able to tell things about him. He's not a fake. He's real, right? Yeah. So there's your first hereafter guy. And you have the little kid whose twin brother dies in a horrible accident, and he's just haunted, and he can't doesn't want to go on without his brother. And there's a the second experience with death guy and then you got the french chick <laughs> over in thailand i guess sure. when the when the, with, the, the, the movie tsunami. starts with yeah. the tsunami yeah. hits and a very the only really cool sequence of the whole film that was a big highlight well, that was the thing. Oh, she gets, it opens with that tsunami yeah. scene yes, and, and shoots its wad it totally does she gets, <laughs> literally yeah she, she has a near-death experience because of it and these are the three characters the movie focuses on going back and forth from one to the other and it's two hours of them not even being aware of each other's existence literally i looked at a friend's watch at this no, point I did where too. they finally actually go to the same place and know that they exist two hours before that happens and before that it's just them sort of looking depressed and wandering around no one is talking at length about this there's like one discussion in the whole film that is annoyingly pedantic with a with a woman going i used to be an atheist but then i realized i was totally full of shit (laughs) did you know that the dream mind can't manufacture images when it's unconscious really isn't that sleep i noticed i know i I noticed cyrus was getting really upset during that scene and all i all i could think about is like that's gonna be you one day saying that same shit. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. You just had a premonition, my friend, right in front of you. Oh, and Clint Eastwood filmed it. Oh yeah, now he's gonna be on his deathbed. Uh, God, I was just playing. Yeah, yeah. Oh God! If I ever do turn around and decide that, you know what? I think there is something. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I hope I'm not spouting the kind of. 
bullshit rationalization. I don't want to die, about. baby Jesus. <laughs> I love you. Well, uh, the, the thing is, it's like none of these stories are, are that interesting. Like Matt Damon's story, he's kind of interesting. You want to find out what happens with him, the guy who's a psychic who's like, no, my powers are cursed. You don't understand. I don't want to use it. I touch people. I just deal in death. And just leave me alone. I just want to work for two dollars an hour in a factory. M- meanwhile, he's also like the world's worst psychic because he works at a factory job where people are telling him like, yeah, they land people off. And when he gets called in to get laid off, he's like, what? Yeah. I'm like, how did you not see that coming? I, I didn't see this coming. Because he's not a clairvoyant. He's yeah. talks to but dead even, people. But even yeah. you're just a regular, normal, thinking person who's not a retard. You can tell. He like, looks around at the dead people. We're like, I don't know. What the hell? Well, that, I mean, that's his thing, man. He, Nostradamus. He, he, well, he, talk, he, thing is he, he talks to dead people, which probably pulls him out of real life and let's takes it I'm sure I'm sure saps away his common sense so he can't yeah. see everyday normal yeah. things coming. Oh, okay, yeah. that's how, that's how it waited. If, it's if, waited where he's got a power but he's also got a weakness and his weakness is the lack of common sense. His superpower is to see the dead. His weakness is seeing the obvious. Yeah. So, <laughs> what Matt Damon needs is somebody just follow him with a trumpet and a mute so when he does his readings on people he they can go wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, like, his whole face pretty much said that the whole time during this long way like Womp, womp. They always had a shot of him looking out the window. It womp, would, womp. No, it would, his readings would be like uh, it, when he when he like because people are expecting something good and it'd mm. be like, uh, yeah, your brother said I'm dead. Leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> exactly. Sorry, kid. What do you want me to tell you? Yeah. You gotta learn how to throw a joke into the mix. You know? yeah. Yeah. And your brother also said he's sorry the time he put his balls on your head and had all his friends take a picture. It was, it was always crushing news. It was it was like yeah, you know, hey, sorry I raped you that time when you were two. You didn't know, so I'm yeah. telling. And now that I'm dead, I don't have the law against me. So hey, kid, brighten up. It seems to be a community in this afterlife. What aren't they telling good jokes? <laughs> so you think you. I, you know, just tell him. I know, I know, this is wasting time, but 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 I just heard the best duck knock joke from Abraham Lincoln. Hold on. Yeah, no, Fluffy didn't run away. I accidentally ran over with the car. Sorry. No. Yeah. yeah. And but you know, speaking of that kid, that kid, uh, I thought that he had some of the he. There was spots in this movie where there was I thought good humor. Mm-hmm. It was at least worth the worth worth the chuckle. And that kid when he was. Uh, some of his moments in the movie, as depressed as he looked, I think he had some really funny parts. Like oh, he when did. He's stalking mm-hmm. Mac Damon, mm-hmm. when they should have been playing like the, the theme from Halloween. Yeah. With that kid stalking <laughs> him. Yeah, I, I know. Like, like the young Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah, he, I, I was expecting him to start running after him like Robert Patrick in Terminator 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, oh, yeah, that's this kid that's like, this, that he's insistent that Matt Damon give him a reading, and he mm-hmm. ain't giving up. And, mm-hmm. and Matt Damon, instead of like, every time Matt Damon turns around, that kid is across the street looking like Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I was expecting that kid to have a knife in one, <laughs> in one scene looking at him. Yeah. But I thought that kid was funny. Oh, no, she was great. No, I, there, there, there's there's a scene where he like goes to the hotel and I think I think he tells the the chick at the front counter, "I'll be back." Yeah. <laughs> and that kid drives to the window. And then, yeah, I see a cop car driving. Yeah, she was like, "The hotel yeah, kid, go away. Yeah, get out of here. Get the bricks." <laughs> All right, I'll be back. <laughs> Except he's coming out on a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the French chick. All right, she survives the tsunami, and it, and that scene, I I can't say enough good things about how they pulled off that tsunami. That mm-hmm. was oh, that was a really good. It really put you there. And uh, when it, you know, you're rooting for her, and yeah. then it's like when when she goes under, you're like the whole audience was like, oh. oh yeah. I know. And you know what? I always look for a scene like that. I'm I'm always curious how they're gonna play a scene out like that because you know it's still you know I'm sure some people who probably been through that probably don't ever want to see that scene, right. but. I'm curious, like how PG they're gonna play it. Are they just gonna have people just drown? But no, you see people getting crushed. I oh, mean, yeah. there, there's yeah, some they, they there's some moments the in there where you're just go, like, where? I must have said, oh fuck, about three times during oh, that I whole mean, scene. It starts out like the bamboo shoot ride at Astro World, mm-hmm. but by the end, you're like, you know, I'm getting crushed by. Oh a no, car. it's, it's Schlitterbahn going gone horribly wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, you got it, you got Fred Sanford struck like coming right towards you, <laughs> crushing you next to the <laughs> oh, yeah, next to a cab. You're like, oh god, no, it's I'm coming to join you, Elizabeth. Boom. <laughs> No, me no, gusto. No, no, you know that's the. It's funny because that is uh, that. That's a great scene, mm-hmm. and it's so good that. I think it kind of works against what they're oh, trying to do because oh, it's supposed it to be tragic. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I was in the theater with my hands up. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's almost like Clint yeah. Eastwood's Hereafter Ride at Six yeah. Flags. You know? so, yeah, I, I was like, yeah, let's do it again. You had that song to that old man pop up. <laughs> and he gets washed up. <laughs> but nothing. The French chick was like, you know, she's supposed to write a book. She said, I'm going to write a book about the hereafter. But she turns it into a conspiracy book about how people won't let the truth out about 
the, what happens after death. Well, it's tied like, into that tiny conspiracy. Tied into that tiny little conversation I was talking about earlier. Yeah. It's just like, wow. So you decided because this one chick tells you, yeah, they don't want to hear the truth. That yeah. it's a giant conspiracy. Yeah, the government's trying to stop people from knowing well, what happens after they die. Mm-hmm. Because they don't have a clue as to what happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, let's let's look at what kind of story this is. Because I do think that there is a stronger story than, than probably what everybody else believes. I mean, because we, it, you look at it and you do think, <clears throat> okay, this is Clint Eastwood's. Uh, I guess this is him reflecting upon death itself and what it means. It is really not that. At least not for me, it wasn't. It was a story about three people whose lives become interconnected at granted, you know, three hours later. But yeah. I mean, but but it's it's how they all become connected. And Matt Damon, he's not only is he probably the best actor out of these people because he's not because I, I think the other people are good actors, but he's the one who's given the most chance to emote and mm-hmm. probably go through a lot of uh, he's a, you know, he's the reluctant psychic. And he's right. I mean let's face it, being a psychic you don't get laid doing that. <laughs> oh no! I, mean, yeah. I don't know. If you work it right, you get laid all the time. Well, well the thing true. is, but, as long as as long as that other person, wrong. as long as that other person doesn't find out what you do, I mean that that seemed to be his I problem. See like, us in where, bed together tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean but, the thing but, is, when he when okay, so when Matt Damon touches people, and I even told uh, Leon this in theater, when he just by the, touching somebody's hand, he's like already getting a, <laughs> a vision. I, yeah. t- I tipped over Leon. I was like. Mm-hmm. Damn, imagine we put his penis in a girl. <laughs> what would happen? If, well, you know, if she was faking or not. I mean, like, you know what? Stop with all the noise. You well, aren't really into if it. If skin contact, like, can you imagine you're fucking a girl and her dead dad is just staring at you? Well, that's what I was going to say. It's like, it's like you get these. That would these, turn me on, actually. I know. You get these, these people they, that he, they're looking at him whenever mm-hmm. he touches a person. It's just kind of like, you know, yeah. he's having sex with his girl. And mm-hmm. Her mother going to come from behind yeah. the bed. Oh, look at my daughter, the tramp. Picked up another loser, you did. <laughs> you know, you know, you know even though I, I, as much as that. It could be a curse. It'd also be a great help because you know how many fucked up relationships you can like avoid. Exactly. But, my God, this 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 girl just just let some dude take a dump on her. I don't need to get with that. You, <laughs> say, you say he's the most interesting character though, but I counter with we don't know any more about him than we do about anybody else in this movie. The only reason he's more interesting is well, a because he's he's, he's not Matt subtitled, Damon. <laughs> yeah. and b because he actually has an interesting quality to him. The fact he's got that a he superpower. Can, he has a superpower. Other than that, he's a really boring character. Well. Okay, what makes him interesting is that he's got Jay Moore as his brother, who's is you know kind of a little on, shady, put on a lot of weight too, yeah, yeah and absolutely. lost a lot of hair. And, 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 hair, and it looks like his hair is trying to run away from his head. I know he's starting to look like Larry from he's the always, Three Stooges. He's always kind of <laughs> had that going. Yeah. it's oh. just weird how it, when he gets older, the way or his hair is trying to hang on to dear life to the scalp <laughs> yeah. of his. <laughs> it's like yeah, maybe he gets talked to as his brother's hair. <laughs> yeah. <Come back. laughs> but, but, he, but he's got this that that, that whole kind of support thing going on with the brother and mm-hmm. the guy he's reading for and people. People coming to, to see him and the job and the cooking class. It, it's a bunch of different things. Whereas with the French woman, okay, she's a news anchor who's trying to write a book but doesn't know what she's doing. And then with the twin brother, I, you know what? That could have been an interesting story. But you talk about pedantic. I mean, it was just it was just so cliche. Everything's they give you nothing. Yeah. There's a there's a death that comes and like if you don't see that coming, like like the minute they say, oh, you know what? You stay here. I'm gonna go. It's like. He's, that, that character's dead. You know, even though uh, as much as I liked Matt Damon in this film, uh, I thought there was, you know, I thought there was something to hold on to as far as his character, just as far as being, you know, who he was living with with his curse. Um, but I also enjoyed the uh, the kid in the film. I honestly, I honestly kind of I, felt for that kid as far as you know him losing his twin brother. Which I mean, I've read plenty of stories where when you lose a twin, that's like a big deal. Yeah. And I thought they really did a good job of like really getting that idea. Well, the, across that you know, I guess the problem with these other characters tragic, for yeah. me, I mean, they go through tragedy and there's there's just little for them to do but mope. Like uh, I'm looking at the girl's name here, Cecile DeFrance. She's a beautiful girl. Yeah. Uh, I I think that she is a good actress, but I mean. You know, she's she has this thing that affects her life, this near death experience, and from that point on, life just even for a small period just takes a small downhill, and that's all she does is mope. The kid, and it's played by two twins who interchange with each other. I'm looking at the oh, names. They, they, oh, they, they, they do a thing like Social Network, where it's one kid playing both parts. <laughs> no, I think one of the kids had his head grafted onto the body of the guy from the Social Network, though, and then they shrunk him down. <laughs> no. Have you seen them trying to explain to Clint Eastwood if they wanted to do that? And him just going, "What the <laughs> hell are you talking? Just give me about? some fucking twins. <laughs> Get the hell out Not of that here. fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> all this technical mumbo jumbo." 
Rumble. He loads his rifle, and that's the end of that conversation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's somewhat interesting in the match when you have kids, you usually have to get twins to play one character because they can't work as long. Well, these two kids is Frankie and George McLaren. I do think that this kid, I mean, he really, I mean, look, I, I felt this kid's lost. Oh, yeah. And they interchanged, you know, the brothers were trading out to play the same role every now and then. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I understood why he was moping about it. I mean, I feel it, really did feel like, man, this kid is crushed. Mm-hmm. So I didn't mind him moping around as much. But, yeah, I mean, at, with the time span and, and length of the film, it kind of dragged on a little bit. Well, see, well the I thing is, the problem is, like, all three stories, they have their interesting points. One might be more interesting than the other, but the fact is, because there's three stories competing for this time, none of them get developed well enough. Each one right. of them could have been its own movie. Uh, what did you, uh, what y'all think of uh, Dallas Bryce Howard? Bryce Dallas Howard. That, whatever the fuck. She's all right. I, mean, I liked her. She's interesting when she's in it, but mm-hmm. then she's just gone. But I, she, I, I thought her character yeah. was psycho. I thought the way she came in and was yeah. so, so just like flirting with him to that degree so much and all up on him and insisting and insisting we go back to your place and all yeah. this. Well, she oh, is you, a redhead. Uh, she, yeah, yeah. It was just, it, you know, it was just so much. Yeah. You, you immediately got what type of person she was, especially when she was going to those cooking classes. Like, you clearly knew her agenda because she clearly told him. And all I thought was like, all right, you're talking to a motherfucker that sees ghosts. This is not going to end this Yeah, this is not going to end good at well, all. You, well, you know well, something? I, I had to laugh that, like, she was the definition of a sure thing, and yet he found some way to fuck it up. Uh, yeah. Can I ask you a... Uh, question? Would it be okay if I told you the answer was no? You don't even know what I was gonna ask. Yes, I do. You can ask me if I can do a reading for you. Look, Melanie, I I barely know you, but I like you. A lot, really a lot, and... Is there any way we can just pretend that maybe we go back in time and just forget about... The phone ringing and my brother's message, and we never had this conversation. Why? Because if we open the door and go down that road, any chance that we had of having something normal will just be gone. I mean, sometimes, I mean, you know, knowing everything about someone, uh, it's, uh, you know, it just seems nice, but really, maybe it's, it's, it's actually better to hold stuff back. I think that this movie for her shows that she is becoming a better actress, at least for me. I mean, we've we've seen her I've evolve. I thought over she was years. good, but she was playing a very different character than she. Used yeah, to yeah, and she looks different every time too. Because when she came it out, it takes a while to recognize. It her. does. I'm yeah. like, who the fuck is this? Yeah. I, I like her in this just because everything's already so banal by this point. Just someone over. You know, bubbling with effervescence at that point, crazy or not, was a welcome diversion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything else is depressing. At least somebody's happy. <laughs> yeah. To a point. But with the kid, at least, you know, I did like how uh, he was determined to find some way True. to contact his brother. And I loved how there's there's some great there's a great scene where you know he's going to different psychics and and, and mediums, and you realize that yeah, in a business like that, you're gonna meet a lot of crazies. And I loved how this kid just reacted to every single one. He was like. You know, everyone he was meeting, it was always disappointment. But I loved how he just reacted to it, and just you know, he was very persistent. Well, he wasn't giving up. Clint Eastwood is at the point now, at least with this with this film, and I, you know, I don't know what he was thinking, but it, this movie gives off it gives off the impression that he's really in love with his direction, with this cinematographer, and with the score of the film. And I think that's why this movie feels like it's taking so long. But at the same time, there's points where I really did like all of that. I loved his direction. I love the score that they had for the film. Really, I, I even, thought the score was was, was slowing it down. I, I it was being really sappy. I didn't. My, I, there are points where I felt like the movie was slow, and there are points where I thought the 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 score of this film actually helped the the pace of this film and made me enjoy it. I and the other thing is the re, the the religious aspect of the film. See, I think there's again people taking different things from it. That that scientists there's a there's a point in the film where they try to argue that there's scientific evidence for the hereafter and and there's a conspiracy to cover it up Mm -hmm. and that takes them trying to bring that in there this is a movie about destiny it's not about trying to convince people that there's scientific proof proof for the hereafter so i don't think that i think that took away from the movie and even there's there's another point in the film because i don't want people to think that this has anything to do with christianity because it doesn't in fact they actively poo poo that that. yeah they did there's there's a part where they, they say that you know part of this conspiracy for the hereafter is done by 
uh, religious people and the religious right and the probably Christians. In fact, so. there was a scene when the kid is going from charlatan to charlatan looking for someone to help him to contact his brother. Uh, one of them, of course, is a, a Christian type person, and he yeah. actually rolls his eyes at this guy saying, oh, yeah, you need to get Jesus involved. So it's like it's very – the film does not want you to mistake uh, that like, Christianity has anything to do with it or at least – at the very least that it even wants to talk about it. E- e- from even, that even though I thought it probably would have given the film some – balls i guess because i mean it did feel like they just kind of they threw it at you but they took it away just in hopes that you know someone like cyrus wouldn't get offended or something i, I mean, wasn't offended by anything i just thought it was laughable well with a story like this i was hoping they they probably just get a little bit more into that but i can understand why they kind of just you know they but presented it and they took it out the, all of this is up to yeah. it's, 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 it's to up lead to, the, to like you know this all, all of this is done to lead to you know some kid having some resolve about his life mm-hmm. and a rom- and a romance that <laughs> that, that was forced, man. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that no. shit, that yeah. shit made no fucking sense. What's I'm like, really? Dude, this is what two, we led up to? It's two yeah. and a half hours that serves no purpose except to lead into the first ten minutes of a romantic film. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's a meet cute. The yeah. whole thing. That's all you're waiting for. Which, the whole film. And when it happens, yeah. it's not like it's not like Sleepless in Seattle where no, these people have no. been in touch or something, no. and you know they're meant for each other. I tell you, I was praying that something wacky was going to happen. <laughs> Anything. I was praying there'd be another giant. <laughs> accident I, I actually about an hour a and comet half, would hit about an hour and a half into it i just turned on frighteners mode yeah. in my head to keep myself entertained where i imagined every long drawn out scene with matt damon alone in his apartment had a trio of wacky ghost cracking jokes around yeah. him the whole time that only he could see and that's the thing like you almost wanted to fall into a conventional like ghost type film because it's so it, it gets so mundane and you're just kind of like god i really don't want to be the fly on the wall during this whole fucking movie but i am and you know you're praying yeah. for like visions of ghosts or you know as the mexicans say you know uh, visions of kukui that's a wrestling yeah, no. <laughs> soon soon to be well, hey, uh, but but, but but you know you, you, ghost story. <laughs> you call it like a destiny film where i think it's more about just closure for these characters that's what they're really searching for you don't uh, think it's not and, a and, destiny film because all their paths uh, are meant to cross and plus they've had some sort of vision of like i was meant to be at this not so much. Life. I mean, it seemed like all that was tacked on. Honestly, yeah, it didn't really harp it, it on did the not, destiny angle. No, uh, uh-uh, no. It just seemed like they were the they were all looking for closure. But the tilt, the whole tacked on ending, which the ending really hurts this film. It, it, but you know, it, it's one of these films that I still enjoyed the acting. I still enjoyed some of these scenes. I mean, it, somewhere in this like four hour movie that was actually an hour and <laughs> longer the more yeah. we talk about it. If yeah, if if there was if there was some, I know there's a good story in here. And I'm sure it was filmed, but just the way it's presented, it just it just loses it just lost my interest. I can tell it lost a lot of the audience's interest. I mean, everyone, every comment I heard about this was that this movie just see that's why I don't like to go that's why I don't like to go by audience uh, members. And I'm not saying this because any preference. Well, I I felt this is the first time I kind of agreed where I'm like. Yeah, there's some there's some interesting things, but no, for for general audience, no, this did drag. Well, see, I, mean, I think really no, did, I yeah. think for general audiences it will, but yeah. I'm like to go by the audience that we see it with mm-hmm. because I came out and I heard people like, well, I was crying. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. I was crying. I mean, because you never know these audience, they uh, they fucking yeah, like no, anything. They, they, they do. I yeah, mean, yeah, I mean yeah, you know, these secretariat and they, and they, yeah. they were crying. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I just heard like three people screaming, "That movie dragged." And I was like, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know I, I agree. You know, but listen, I there's something there. There's some things that appeal to me. In this movie, that's going to make me give it the rating I'm going to give it. Uh, there, there are certain certain things like I like going from Paris to London, back to San Francisco, which is where all these stories take place. Uh, I like certain things about Clint Eastwood's direction. I mean, he Clint Eastwood managed to do a montage in his film without making it seem like a montage. It was actually part of his storytelling. But everything that we just said, I cannot disagree with. And I would tell anybody who's even thinking about going to see this movie, take heed of the criticisms more than you do the praise, because I think whatever praise I have in it really are things that just appeal to me. I, I think it, I think it also depends on how much you really, you know, are interested in this type of subject matter, you know, really. Well, either that can like make you. I would even say don't even look at it for that because it doesn't make sense. I mean, they're trying to convince you of something that is still debatable. Like all this scientific proof, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm willing to say, to go out on a limb and say that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's just me. But I, I was able to separate myself from that. So I'm, I, that's enough for me to give this movie a low matinee. You know, as you were saying, Carlos, like you wonder how much has to do with how much this sort of thing interests you. And one of my favorite shows that I watched last year was a BBC show called, BBC show called Afterlife about a medium who has a similar type of ability and a friend, her friendship with a guy 
guy who's a skeptic who doesn't really believe, even though his dead son is constantly hammering at her. Will you please give him this message? And it's like, la, 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 la. Now I'm doing but a show. I, love, I, I adore that show. I thought it was fantastic. Mm. This type of thing does really interest me. And I was so incredibly bored with this. I'm sorry. I didn't like the score. I agree with you, Leon, on that. I thought it was it was pushy where it didn't need to yes. be and overly maudlin and just plain overwrought inappropriately. Yeah. I thought that there inappropriate. was... Inappropriate. That's, that's what I kept thinking about. It, it just feels like such a waste because this is a good idea that never gets past the starting page. The, I'm going to give it generously a low rental, but this is my least favorite Clint Eastwood directed film. Oh, well, well, dang, dude, you didn't really leave me a whole lot left to say. Oh, so <laughs> I, I, I agree with just about everything you said. Somebody needs to be able to tell Clint Eastwood, look, dude, every movie you make doesn't have to be an Oscar movie. They aren't all important. You going to tell him that? <laughs> I said somebody. I didn't say me. <laughs> He's loading his rifle right now. But, I mean, it's, <laughs> you should tell him, like, hey, Clint, I mean, it seems a little bit long. What about it? <laughs> it's it's, it's just short of being. It really is a movie where you can get up and go to the bathroom and do everything you got to do. You know, take a shit, read the paper, come back. And nobody will have to explain to you what, what you meant. If you came back and saw these people, if you got like about 10 minutes of them at the beginning, 15 minutes, and saw them come into whatever destinies are past, they cross whatever at the end, you probably would be able to put all that together yeah. and not miss anything. I mean, just not to draw this my <laughs> review out as long as that movie, uh, yeah, I give it a low rental. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll say that you're right. If they would have taken like that first like 20 minutes and the last 20 minutes of this film and put it together, that would have been, I think, a solid film probably because, you know, I do... I, I it would have been a 40-minute film. I, I, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I do enjoy when, when uh, these characters actually, you know, because we all see it coming. I hope I'm not spoiling anything, but, you know, you eventually do see them all come together, and I thought they really played off well off each other, even though I did not like the tacked-on ending that they had for this film. I mean, I, I'll give it a rental. This is one that totally we should have been in the trailer for so we could have been the wacky ghost talking to Matt Damon <laughs> oh you know what better get out of this movie right now. watching him have sex because we could all be there watching him we'll be like the Olympics putting up a 10 <laughs> yeah nail that shit Matt Damon uh -huh. now you boys watch this who are you talking to nobody